Hi, and welcome or welcome back to Books Everywhere. This is a very different video than I normally do, where I am basically doing some baking, some Christmassy baking, and I thought I would just like share some stuff that I've read recently, stuff that I think is great for Christmas. I just wanted to do a kind of like Christmassy video. And I thought while I'm doing some Christmassy baking, I could combine these two things. So I don't know how long this video is going to go because I am trying to do baking stuff at the same time as talk to you guys. So this could be an utter disaster, but I thought, why not give it a shot? I'm currently making, or just basically covering Brazil nuts in chocolate to do chocolate Brazil nuts, which my grandpa loves and I try and do for him every Christmas. So that's what I'm currently doing as I'm talking to you. Um, and yeah, I just thought we could have like a kind of Christmassy reading video. Um, this is kind of, it's kind of recommendations, but I'm well aware that it's way too late to recommend Christmas reads to you guys. So it's more of just like a cosy, this is the Christmas books that I've read and enjoyed, slash maybe some I want to read, um, or one I want to read. There's only like one that I'm aware of right now. Um, and I thought I would just discuss them. So the first one I want to talk to you about is a book I've literally just finished a couple of days ago, which is called Make You Mine This Christmas, and it's by Lizzie Huxley Jones. This one came in the Illumicrate Afterlight box for the end of the year. And I actually listened to the audiobook of this one, and I loved it. It is queer, it's fake dating, so if you like the fake dating trope, you will love it. Um, it's like complicated, messy Christmas. Um, but it's also super, super sweet as well. It basically follows this girl called Half, who meets this guy at a party, they kiss, and they end up back at her apartment, but nothing really happens. And then the next day he is like, I need somebody to be my fake girlfriend, and come back and do Christmas with my family. And she's like, well, my parents have abandoned me, I've got nobody, I'm just gonna, why not? I'll just do it. And then on the way to meeting him, to go to his family's house for Christmas, she has this meet cute with this girl at a train station um, and then it transpires when she gets to his house that this girl she had a meet cute with is his sister. <laughs> it is just like drama filled but in the best way and it's just yeah really really cute. There's so much to love about it and I just I really loved it, it got me into the festive spirit. It also kind of reminded me in a way of Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson, which is not one I'm going to talk about at length in this video, but because I feel like it's, like I did enjoy it, but it, it has some trigger warnings, so please look up the trigger warning. I also can't really remember what it's about, so I don't really want to talk to you guys about it because I don't really remember um, that much about it. It's just like, following this family on Christmas um has their kind of struggling to live together and they kind of all have their own problems and it is like the most drama filled YA but it's also very entertaining I read that last year and it kind of reminded me of that in a way but this one was a lot more mature so that's the first book Make You Mind This Christmas by Lizzie Huxley Jones which is currently only out in um the Illumicrate hardback version and ebook and audiobook but I think there's a paperback coming next year. The second one I want to talk to you guys about is Let It Snow by John Green which I feel like was by John Green and two other authors. Maureen Johnson and Lauren Miracle. It's a collection of three short stories I think but they're all intertwined. I've read it and I read it like a long time ago so I feel like this is not going to be the best recommendation but also I do want to say there is a Netflix, I want to say, Netflix film, which I did rewatch and is so sweet. And I, I do really like that Netflix film. This one is, yeah, following three different wintery stories, winter love stories. It's on one night, it's on Christmas Eve, and it's just like these three different people in three different locations all stuck in this blizzard, which is the worst blizzard for 50 years. This chocolate is so hard to break up. 
So one of the stories is set on a stranded train. There's one that's set in a waffle house. And there's one which is like a collection of friends, I think, that get stuck in a car. That's all I remember about it. Um, and they all kind of come together at the end and it's just really, really sweet. But as I said, I haven't read that for many years, but I have that almost broke my nail. Um, but I did watch the film this year. It did break my nail really far down as well. Okay, the next one is my true love gave to me which is 12 holiday stories which again i read many years ago i think i read it in 2016 according to goodreads and i honestly with anthologies obviously they're always a little bit hit and miss you're always gonna like some more than others i definitely remember feeling like that with this one <laughs> But the ones I loved, I really, really loved. And I still remember like one of them, which was a Stephanie Perkins one. Um, I think it was Stephanie Perkins and it was sat on Christmas tree farm. And it was the most adorable thing. And I do remember just generally really, really enjoying that book. So there's another <laughs> recommendation. Um, but I don't really feel like I can say that much about because there is 12 different stories in it. And I think they're all contemporary from what I remember. I could be wrong, like some of them could be like fantasy Christmas, <laughs> fantasy because they're holiday stories, so I think there's um, Han Hanukkah and Winter Solstice as well, um, but I think most of them are Christmas ones. I'm now doing like chocolate bark with cranberry and pistachio on, which is what I'm currently doing by the way. The next one I want to recommend is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Kahn and David Leviathan. However, I honestly want to recommend the TV show more than the book. <laughs> I have read the book. I think I read it in, I read it in 2018. That doesn't feel like that long ago, but it feels like I read it so long ago. And it's basically following Dash and Lily. It's set in New York City. It's set in, I think it's The Strand. It's set in a bookshop, kind of. And it's basically one of them leaves a notebook in this bookshop with a dare, a dare in it, or dare a list, like, a lick, like a list of dares in it. And whoever picks up the notebook has to fin like fill out, fill out the dares, do the dares. Oops. But I honestly remember like I gave the book three stars, <laughs> um, and it was like fun, but it didn't really, and it was entertaining, but it didn't really like impress me that much, which is why I gave it like. I liked it, but that was kind of it rating. So I kind of want to recommend a TV show because I actually really like the TV show. I think it's a Netflix show again. And it's one that I do actually try and watch. Like I would like to watch it this Christmas, although we are now only really a couple of days off Christmas. So I'm probably not going to be able to do that this year. But last year and the year before, I did watch it um, while I was wrapping presents. And it was just really really sweet i think i started watching it like two years ago and i finished watching it last year um because i i didn't finish it the year before but yeah it is a really sweet tv show and i love the setting love that it's set in new york it's filmed really beautifully as well so that's another one i would recommend but i would more recommend a tv show than the actual book i feel like i'm gonna stop now for now <laughs> but i will be back with more recommendations and more baking a different day because <laughs> it is like 10 o'clock now and I'm just doing like mad late night baking. Um, there is many more recommendations and, and like things I've enjoyed going around in my head but I am gonna head off and do some more of this before I head to bed and I will be back with more recommendations another day. So this is what I've just done. <laughs> later now to be honest it's not the next day however i am back and i thought today i would share with you as i make some frangipan i thought i would share my more classic recommendations with you i'm also trying to count how many tablespoons this is which might be a little difficult <laughs> to remember but i thought i'd share couple of classics that I like to read that I think of 
as Christmassy. Um, first one being, pretty obvious one, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which I only read for the first time a couple of years ago on the kind of recommendation, although he doesn't do recommendations, he'll tell me that, <laughs> of my boyfriend Mark. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. It's a really nice, I think I listened to the audiobook and I think I've read it physically as well, but I'm not 100% sure, like another year. Um, and I really enjoyed it and I really like the audiobook. It's very short. I'm sure you guys all know the story of A Christmas Carol, whether you've read it or seen it or seen The Muppets Christmas Carol or another version of it. And I felt like it's retold in a lot of Christmas films as well. Um, I watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation recently for the first time. And I remember thinking that the boss was Scrooge and that the family are, um, what's his name? Like the family are the, the family that work for um, Scrooge, in which I can only remember the Muppets version, so it's Kermit and Miss Piggy in my mind. Because <laughs> I can't remember what they're actually called right now. Another one that is not actually strictly a Christmas book, but I kind of think of as a Christmas book or a Christmas film is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, which I absolutely love the book and the 2019 adaptation, which I actually saw on New Year's Day 2020. So I feel like that is partly why I associate it with Christmas, but I love that adaptation so much. And I love the book so much, especially the first part of the book, little, like the, the one that was actually published as Little Women originally, whereas usually it's Little Women and Good Wives that are published in one. So the first part, which is just Little Women, I just find such a comfort. And even though it's not like a Christmas book, I do associate it with Christmas because it is, it's partly set at Christmas and there is like a lot of Christmassy and winter scenes in the film, which I absolutely love. So I definitely kind of associate that one with Christmas. This looks really nice. This is just like oil and sugar, but <laughs> it looks like really nice fondant. On a completely different note, I received a picture book yesterday from the publisher called Through the North Pole Snow. Can't remember the author right now, but I just want to recommend that as well because that is, it's just so cute. It was a picture book that I requested from the publisher, partly for me and partly for my boyfriend's nephews to hopefully have on Christmas Eve, I'm thinking. As a nice like Christmas Eve book, there is an Icelandic tradition where you gift books on Christmas Eve and I feel like that one would be a nice one to read to them on Christmas Eve. So, and that one is just so cute. It's about this little fox that is basically Santa's friend. And I just think it's absolutely adorable. And if I wasn't being so lazy and in the middle of cooking right now, I would go and get the actual book so I could show you the art style because the art style is also really, really gorgeous. And I really, really like it. I think it's really, really well drawn. And it's just a cute little picture book. I think would be perfect to read on Christmas Eve. I really like that Icelandic tradition. It's one that I've done for the past couple of years with Mark and also with my friend Courtney we tend to also do the Christmas Eve book as a Christmas Eve gift which I just think is really sweet. I think the fourth tradition is that you have chocolate as well and that you sit and read and eat chocolate on Christmas Eve which I just think is really really sweet. I love that tradition. Okay I stopped being lazy and I went to get the book because look how beautiful it is and also you find a page. I think the art style is so cute. How sweet is that? I know this is not the best way to show you and also I don't want to get this all messy because I'm cooking but absolutely adorable book. Um, I feel like I'm running out of Christmas books, but there are a couple wintry ones that I want to kind of give a shout out for. The first one being The Last Bear by Hannah Gold, because that one is just absolutely adorable. It's about this young girl who goes to live in this island with on this island with her dad, and it's just her and her dad. And her dad's like a monitors the weather and it's a very sweet story of her friendship between herself and this bear who live on the island 
Um, also Leela and the Blue Fox by Kira Millwood Hargrave and Tom DeFreston, which I've yet to read, but it's the husband and wife team who also wrote Julia and the Shark, which I absolutely loved, and I do want to read Leela and the Blue Fox very, very soon, hopefully. So I feel like that's another one that I will throw into this video, even though I haven't read it yet. Another one that I'm also going to throw in here as one I have yet to read but would really like to is A Merry Little Meet Cute, which is by Julie Murphy. I didn't realise it was by Julie Murphy, who is the same author as Dumplin' um, and a few other books, but it's by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. It's apparently a steamy plus-size holiday rom-com about an adult film star who is semi-accidentally cast as a lead in a family-friendly Christmas movie and the former bad boy pop star she falls in love with. Sounds very cool, honestly. I would like to read that one while well, listen to the audiobook of it, because I found the audiobook the other day, and I've already heard good things about that one, so I feel like I should try and give that one a go um, around Christmas, so like the next few days, basically. I don't have an audiobook on the go right now, so I'm considering purchasing that one as my next audiobook read, possibly, because it does sound very good. I feel like there is definitely a few more that I want to recommend to you, but they are evading my brain right now. Um, so I am going to love you and leave you, carry on baking, and if I do remember them, I will pop back and wrap up this video with a couple of more recommendations. Hello, it's again a couple of days later and I am going to wrap up this video, which has basically turned into like a vlog. Um, I haven't shown you guys like the outcome of my baking, but let me actually show you a hamper. I present a hamper <laughs> and this is what my work has produced. Um, yeah. Here you go. So the stuff that I have been making throughout the course of this video has gone in there, including other bits as well, and a lot of other people have chocolate and stuff, like baked stuff, for gifts um, that are just in presents, wrapped only in bags and stuff. So yeah, that's what I've basically been doing throughout this video when I have shown you little clips or I've been baking. But anyway, I just wanted to, I think I said at the end of the last clip, I wanted to have like the final look through um my books and check if there was any others that I haven't mentioned. The only one really that's come up I think is Midnight and Everwood by what is her name? Emma Cosnia, which is a nutcracker retelling, which I did really enjoy actually. It's about a girl who is pulled into this like other world, like Narnia style, which is very, very Christmassy. It's quite dark in places. Um it is a romance at its heart, but yeah it is quite dark. And I did quite enjoy that one when I read it a year or so ago, I think. Um, so I think, I do want to shout that one out. I've also read a very, I don't know, a Merry Little Meet Cute that I was talking about the other day. So I actually read that in the past few days and I must say I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really good. I also then went on to Just for December by Laura Jane Williams, which is a fake dating on a movie set, set between the writer of the book that the film that they're filming is being set on, that was a very confusing way to say that, and the main star of the film, um, which I did enjoy but it was more like a kind of three star than a four, four point five that a very a merry little meet cute was. Um, I did still enjoy it and it was like nice to read something else that was festive but it didn't blow me away. It didn't pleasantly surprise me like a merry little meet you did. Um, and I just can picture it as well, but if you're looking for another fake, if you're looking for like a fake dating film set style, I think it's set in Europe um, as well, I think. And the main character's from the UK, I think, so he talks about being in London a lot, um, or at least he travels a lot. And I did, I did enjoy it, so... I'm glad I picked that one up. Also to give a quick shout out to Companions, so I won't really talk about them that much because they are companions to other books, but I'll Be Home for Christmas by Mason Diva, which is a companion novella to I Wish You All the Best, um, following the two main characters on there, which I'm really tempted to actually reread over the next few days. It's only 60 pages and it is really, really cute. And if you haven't read I Wish You All the Best, it is the most adorable and hard-hitting and heartwarming and beautiful book about being non-binary um and I just really really love that book 
and I love Are We Home For Christmas. It is very, very sweet. And also Nick and Charlie, which is part of the Heartstopper universe, um, which is a novella as well, which is really, really nice um, to follow them at Christmas. That one is also kind of hard hitting in itself because it's following one of their Christmases that's not easy in a lot of ways, but it's also really nice to be part of like that world. I think that's all the Christmas books that I want to talk to you guys about right now. Um, I don't know what my hair's doing. And I think I'm going to wrap up this video here. I'm tempted to try and read A Christmas Carol on audio over the next few days, but I don't own it right now on audio, so I might have to buy that. But anyway, <laughs> I think I'm going to wrap up this probably quite chaotic, quite random, hopefully not too mismatched video here and say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed whatever this mess has been and I'll see you in another video please leave in the comments any Christmas recommendations you guys have. Um, if I've missed any that you really like and I haven't mentioned, please leave a comment below. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.